Westchester Select Board meeting, July 11th, 2022. Um, we have posted the agenda in three places around town on our website and have emailed our list of interested persons. So we are all legal to have our meeting. Um, we are going to institute uh, the five minute rule this, with this meeting. Um, when we get into a discussion, you have five full minutes, which actually is quite a long time, um, to uh, voice your opinion. And then we move on, and once other people have spoke, you can get a whole other five minutes. Uh, we have read the prior minutes for our June 27, 2022 select board meeting. I saw no errors. Me either. So I move that we accept these minutes. And I seconded that motion. All in favor? All right. And they will be posted. Um, first on our list was. That's my name. Zach Kavakis, who does not seem to be here, so we'll move that later in case he's running late. Um, our first guest of the evening would be Pat Gendron, and I believe you were here to discuss a driveway permit. I am, actually. In 2016, I applied and, put, uh, and paid $50, and I checked the minutes, and I don't know what happened to $50, but there was no yay or nay on the driveway permit. And then last year, uh, I came in on, I got it right here, 9-17 of 21, and somebody told me that I didn't need to actually spend the $50 again, so I didn't, and there was no action taken. So I'm here tonight to see what I got to do to get some action. Mm -hmm. I am holding a permit for driveway construction that I'm assuming you filled out. That was dated July 9th, 2021. Oh, so, excuse me, maybe it was July. I don't actually have it. I do have fine. it here, but oh, right here. The first one was issued. I mean, I can, I can actually show you if you. I've got one. Okay, yeah, that was on 7 9 21. Yes. All right, sorry. So, okay, me. we're all on the same yes. page. Um, oh, the original one was back on 16. Mm -hmm. I understand and, that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, um, Frank can chime in on this. Um, I think we have some positive news for you, so. Um, basically, the lot was pre-existing zoning, and there's no way that the town can hold anything to block you out of there, so the, your permit's gonna be granted with a condition that it's only one house because of the, the slope and all that, and I think if you go to subdivided, I believe the fire department would have say over how steep that is and whether or not you could do that and that would all be through zoning but I've talked to John about the driveway and he's good with it just and based on one house right yep if you go through zoning and, and you subdivide it you as one lot you can only build one house on it anyway through zoning regardless of the size of the lot it, you have to subdivide it all in order to put two houses or three Understood. houses on that. So yes, basically that's the way it is. And I've started that procedure already. Yeah, and um, that's so that's all through the zone. Understood. That's nothing to do with us. And um, as so, far and so as, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I just have a question because I ha I do have the Vermont standards here for residential and commercial drives. Right. And I have an engineer that's on the job over there that has been for the last year and a half, yeah. maybe two years, and I'm meeting those standards. Well, you that's a zoning okay. issue with okay. that. I mean, we're granting you a driveway permit, and that's what we're doing. That's all we can do. We so don't have any jurisdiction over the rest of it. Okay. So then at a later meeting, maybe I can get on the agenda. To Not through us. It's okay. all through zoning. zoning yes. right. yeah. And, they, and they, then you've got to go through subdivision, standards, and all that. So. And they'll, the fire department will have to weigh in on whether they can service that as a, as, right. as that. So, and that'll be all through zoning. There's nothing else the select board needs to be involved with on that. 
And then, so and so far as issuing, is it good tomorrow or? Oh yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll sign it today. I have it in my hands. There's also a sign. Line, line driveway. Yes, uh, John's going to put a. Is going to want to get a sign up there for blind driveway. There probably should have been one there anyway for Steve's and have been for years. And we always were amazed that that even was able to go in when, yeah. they, built, when they built that house. But well, there uh, used to be a mirror across the road, mm -hmm. yeah. so that people coming out could see. They they don't last long in yeah. any situation. <laughs> Not through the winter. They become a target, <laughs> yeah. basically. Um, so that. That's it, Pat. I mean, well, I appreciate that. Yep. Good. I see that there was some work done uh, at the bottom for uh, drainage. Yeah. To help with drainage. That's what we've been working on mainly, really. And so I think that that is something until it's well established, it will need to have some babysitting along the way. Keep an eye on it as the seasons change. And well, right now, to be honest with you, just so you guys know, I know it's a different deal. It's not zoning, but uh, we have cut to where these apply. I mean, they came out, staked it, and we dug to it. Mm -hmm. So that approach is technically 35 feet back, 3% down with a crown in the state of Vermont is acceptable, whether there's five or 10. I'm just talking about my baby, the bottom of Bethel Mountain Road <laughs> that took a year of my life away. Six, oh. <laughs> months, six months of my life away, and I want to make sure that I don't need to do that again. I understand completely. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I understand. <laughs> I, they marked up the road, so it looks like they're going to put bigger culverts in, I'm assuming, uh, across the town right there. Is that, is no, that they're not doing the culverts. No, they're not doing anything there. They just marked oh. culverts where they were. Where they, just with paint? <clears throat> yeah, well, okay. he's, he's got, <clears throat> the program is looking at the culverts every okay. year, and he has a rotation that oh, he I does, see. so no he, he keeps an eye on <clears throat> well, what's going on there. We actually went one size larger culverts on everything the engineer told us, just in case a stick Good got in the way. It, it was cheap insurance, that's so why I told Pat he spent mm -hmm. money to do it, so every single culvert on the whole road is oversized. Right. They're actually bigger than the town culverts crossing the road. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. to get slightly bigger. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of culverts in the world right now. Okay. So are you you're happy? Okay. Well, I am. Yeah. I appreciate we it. it. We, are, we would still be waiting I for Jim's signature, who is on his way back. He should be back in the next couple of days. But we've got we got two out of three. We're good to go. I thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Yes. <sighs> okay. And you don't have to stay for the whole meeting if you don't want to. Well, I'm curious what's up on the agenda tonight. <laughs> okay, so um, there is something on our agenda, agenda called Review Treasures Report. Um, we have decided that we want to review that with the full board here. Um, it is something that our, audi our auditors have asked us to do. And since we are going to be starting a new process, we want to make sure that all three of us are here. So we're going to forward that to our next meeting. <coughs> if that's what people do. And the next thing on our new business is the White River Alliance asking permission for use to the parking lot for hazardous waste day September 17th from 8 a.m. to noon. Um, that is a permit that we have, and the only snafu on this is they request the town constable for the day, and that um, we will be reimbursed for his time from the solid waste district. Right, and it's just that one day that they're asking. Right, for that. it's like a four-hour stint, eight to twelve. I mean. Yeah, eight to twelve. Is that the same day that we have trash and recycling? Yes. Yep. So they share the lot. They share the lot. So they really they want the constable to direct traffic is the way I read this letter. So, we'll have so they can set the lot up, you know how they how they do anyway. Food and, then, and hazardous waste all the same They can time. do hazardous waste over on this side. Mm -hmm. Busy day. Yeah. <laughs> so you. Do you want to make a motion to accept this? Or? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to accept the hazardous waste day collection event to fold into the same day as our trash and recycling. 
That is the same day, right? It's every, it's every, every Saturday. Saturday. It's that, every Saturday. That is the, that is Saturday. Okay. Yep, you're right. I second that motion. All in favor? All right. All right. Here's a good one. And it's not the same day as the harvest bar. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Martha. Yes, uh, the next item is harvest bar, my park permit application, and it's typed out. Someone put in September 12th, but I'm sure I filled out September 10th on the on the form. <laughs> okay. Yep. I see because that. The correct date. The correct date is September 10th. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. You got that right. Yes, it's on here is September 10th. Okay. Yeah. You, you, okay. Yep, you did it correct, Martha. Yep, the, okay, the, agenda, you. the agenda has a mistake of being September 12th. We're changing that to September 10th. I don't mm -hmm. think that that would prevent us from taking action. Um, no. Mm -hmm. Throughout the years, there has been no objection to the Harvest Fair, so I move that we accept the application for use of the town park and allow the Harvest Fair to Happen. I second that. Thank you, thank you, thank All you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and you missed up at the top of the new business with Music Net and Compost. Is there a reason for that? Um, the people that were visiting us are not here. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next thing and the last thing on our new business agenda is um, quarter potty removal discussion. Um, we have been taking inventory of quarter potties that we have located around town. Um, we also are taking note of the cost of those quarter potties. Um, also, the fact that we have so many that every once in a while one shows up missing. Um, so that cost may be borne on the town to replace the missing porta potty. So if anybody around here knows we'll of a porta potty that showed up on their property, the one that's <laughs> it, missing is gray. It belongs gray. to the town, and we we'd like to have it back. <laughs> um, that said, um, it did. It did make us realize that we are a little over budget on porta potty, and we'd like to have a discussion about the location of them, the seasons of them, and um, if there's something we can do to maybe bring that cost down a little bit. Can you note where we have them right now? Yes, um, we have one at Beans Bridge. We have one on the park and the ADA accessible at the firehouse has been opened. That's open like during the summer. Um, and then we had one at the Little League field behind the high school. <coughs> and then we had that one moved to the tennis courts. And that was the one that was stolen. And so now they've brought another one and re-delivered to the tennis court. So there's a total of five that we pay for. We're still paying for the one that was stolen. Beans Park Firehouse and Tennis Court. Yep, that's yes. So the Four. beans. Sorry. Park. I think the one at the firehouse, the ADA one, is was a uh, requirement for the park, I believe. Yes. Down there, is that correct? Yeah, the park, right? Yes. So you that one is we can't. I'd love to get rid of it. I know. I'd, I'd love to get rid <laughs> of it. He wanted to too. too. <laughs> <coughs> but I don't think we can with the because it was part of that the grant. Well, part of that change in that to a park, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. So these gizmos don't have meters on them, so we really don't know exactly how much usage they get. So I guess the discussion <coughs> surrounds the park versus Beans Bridge Park. Um, does the porta potty at Beans Bridge get a lot of use? Um, can it be removed? Um, we're just open for discussion, folks. Well, we've so. just encouraged all kinds of people to go and hang out around Beans Bridge. Um, 
the, all the bike racers and things like that. Mm -hmm. I know they sometimes bring their own. <coughs> Um, but there are lots of people who stop at Haynes Bridge. I'm, I'm not disputing. And I guess I would ask another question: Did the fee on the porta potties go up? Which is why we're now spending so much money. Always go yes. The fee on them on the porta potties themselves went up, as well as they're like charging more of a delivery cost. And when they come, they have like a fuel surcharge. I don't blame them. Yeah, totally. But that's what's happening. And I think the one that we put on the park was placed there um, because of the COVID, and um, there was not access to potty facilities. And there still is not. Time. So we're just bringing this up as time goes by. Well, I think you see that the park one gets a huge amount of views. Yeah. And Nick, sure um, Pikachuda has something to say on Zoom. Nick, let's hear what you have to say. He doesn't like it. Yes, um, this is about actually um, the use that that forty potty gets. Um, we, uh, Amy and I, were wondering if there could be some discussion around possibly moving the porta potty to a different location um, on the park. Uh, it's um, it's become quite inv invasive um, for us because we live so close to it, and um, you know we there's a lot of strange people that are out, out front of our house all the time, and that's you know, not, you know, really that much of a hardship. But it's, um, you know, that we we're constantly hearing that the door slam, and it's, um, and then you know the the smell and when they come and clean it out, it's it's not very pleasant. We're wondering if um if there was something else, um, if there was another option, and if you know if you're uh, if you're needing a porta potty to be put somewhere else, I would recommend that one. You recommend what? That one. Oh, that one. I recommend okay. taking that um, one and putting it somewhere. Where would you? Where would you recommend we put the two on the park? Two on the park? Where, where would you like it to move to? Oh, uh, um, you know, I don't know. That, that's what I'd like to discuss. Is there anywhere else that on the park that that would anybody that people would feel comfortable with? I mean, is there a problem with having it on the park, like maybe right next to the bandstand or something, or? Or uh, you know, or or you know, um, maybe even well, maybe the other side of the park. Um, you know, and we're just um, we're wondering why it has to be right in front of our. It's not, I know it's not directly in front of our house, but it's close enough that it's. So we're wondering if it, if anybody could, uh, if anybody would want to uh, open a discussion about that. Um, we we'd like to uh, see if anybody would be open to moving that somewhere else. Okay, let me just ask one more question based on the comments that you said. Um, are, are you thinking that because we have a porta potty on the park that it's inviting strange people to hang out on the park? It, is, is that the insinuation there? Um, I'd say it's bringing people, um, people that normally would just be driving through are stopping, you know, and um, I don't know how much it's really like when people stop when they come through and say, "Ooh, porta potty," and they use the porta potty, and then they, "Oh, look, a park," and then they stay and enjoy the park. I'm not sure how often that's happening. People are just kind of driving through and using the porta potty and taking off. Um, and uh, sometimes there's people that people have to hang out. Um, sometimes there's a line of cars, uh, and uh, it's just uh, you know, um, it just you know, it's it's not that big a deal. It's just that we. Um, you know, it's sometimes when we're out when we're out in front of our house, it, it um it makes it a little harder to enjoy being out there with you just kind of seeing people walking in and out of a porta potty, hearing that door slam, and you know it's 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 just uh you know so we're wondering if if it could be put anywhere else. I mean, if it has to be there, if there's a reason that it has to be right there, we understand and we can live with it. But if it could be moved somewhere else, we'll just see if anybody would be open to that. Okay, well, this is so noted. I, I have my hand raised. Hi, Burma. Hi. Um, two things. I think an ideal place to put the porta body would be on the corner of Route 100 and where Bethel Mountain Road comes down into town across from the gas station on that corner. 
it gets a lot of traffic and I think it would be a convenient place for people to stop and use it and it wouldn't interfere so much with a householder's life and their living situation. And the other um, comment that I would like to ask is, can you give us the cost of what it actually costs to have a porta potty? What are the fees, the total porta potty? What are the fees, the total fees? I, I don't have that handy. Can you give me the bills? <laughs> I think, there's a, right here. I think there's a normal one in there. I know that there's a special one. Yeah, I saw one. it. I saw it. Here, too. Well, it's $301. <clears throat> yeah, that's the special one. Is it $75? Huh? Is it $75 per? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. it's more than that. Uh, it's it's like like I think it's like $137. 30, I'm yeah, just trying that's to what find. I was per per what? Per, 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 I'm per, per unit. Just a second. Per Hopefully. unit, and then yeah, and that's clean per, per month. Per month. Per month. Per month. Yeah. That's what yeah. I was wondering. Per so month. it's hundred and twenty-seven dollars and fifty cents to have it serviced, mm -hmm. um, and then there's a ten-dollar fee on top of that for a delivery or fuel charge. So it's one hundred and thirty-seven fifty a month for each. And you, uh, you rent them for. Four or five months? No more than six. About six, really. Yeah, it's tip, It's yeah. about six. <laughs> it starts with Little six League months. and then, yeah. And we get rid okay, of the late thank fall. You. Thank you. Anyone else have an opinion about the porta potties? <laughs> well, I look to them. me. Um, if you um, lost your porta potty at the tennis court. One second, court. Martha. The people can walk up to the fire station and use that one. You can't move the one from the fire station, right? Right. Correct. So it's not that far. From the tennis courts? The tennis courts saying? up to the... Far enough. <laughs> it's far enough, I realize. <laughs> 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 Too far. So let's just, just go in the bushes <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the bridge too far. <laughs> <laughs> Better get in the car and drive. <laughs> well, there you could do that too. Um, on Zoom, we have Martha and then Amy Braun. Martha, uh, what say you? I've these days, since I used to be head of the park committee and don't have anybody else on it, but now, so my I agree with Nick. Maybe I'm, I'm, you know, I don't live there, but I can imagine it must be bothersome for them sometimes to have it in that location. And am I understanding him correctly that where he would like it? is down near the intersection of Route 100 and Bethel Mountain Road across from the Skip Mart? That's what Burma was asking. Nick was, uh, Nick was targeting behind the bandstand. Okay. Up against the bandstand on the backside or okay. side um, side round. I don't have a specific uh, opinion about either one, but I definitely would like to keep a, a, keep a porta potty on the park because before we had one there, um, I used to hear from people that you know, who lived in the area that they got, you know, people were wondering and everything. And then, of course, when the, you know, looking for a place. And of course, when the um, pandemic happened and play, lo you know, local places like the Skip Mart, of course, um, didn't want their restrooms used by everybody coming through, of course, and you couldn't blame them. Um, the porta potties became all the more important. Um, so I don't know. I would like. If, if you're going to move it, okay, but I would love to keep one on the park if possible, not remove it from there. Okay. Okay. That's Amy. my opinion. Amy Braun. Yes, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, super. Uh, I just a little, I remember that the porta potty was on the opposite side of the park on the 4th of July. Uh, because I got stung by a bee when I went into the porta potty. So I just wanted to share that it did exist on the opposite side where no one actually lives full time. So I'll just kind of push for that. Um, also, just comment, you know, it is it is important that we do have these things available to people. Um, I do think it's good to have one near Beans Bridge as well. Um, but just also to comment that when the 4th of July happened, we were literally surrounded by porta potties. There were two directly across the street. I we, noticed calling, that. <laughs> we were calling them the proliferating porta potties. So we don't mean to be difficult. It's just, it's really not a pleasant thing to be surrounded by porta potties and then out of state cars that are pulling up and people getting out. And 
you know, we do, we are the only people on the park without a porch, but we are, are the people who sit in our chairs and do appreciate the view. And when you have to look through a porta potty to see the beautiful park, it's, it's just gets a little bit tiresome. So maybe Amy, across the way. <laughs> Amy, I want to apologize for that because I'm also director of the 4th of July parade and, and they, it wasn't, I saw the truck come to put them in there but I was doing other stuff and I didn't notice where they put them until that morning. And then there was no way I could get them changed. I'm sorry. You don't need also, to apologize. We're, we're here just to sort of express that, you know, the, the odor yeah. sometimes, and then the 3 a.m. banging of the door when people come and pee at it or whatever they're doing in it. I don't know. But. <laughs> well, because I've always had to order an extra one for 4th of July, because when we get a big crowd, we need more than one sort of, you know. Okay. It, there's you. also something else about those porta potties yeah. okay. the, the, that would put there for July 4th. They were put right on the edge of the road. And so when people were coming out of there, they were walking right out onto the road. And we witnessed a mm -hmm. couple of times when you know, somebody could get clipped, like coming out of the bathroom. So they should be definitely put that maybe a couple feet back. Um, Martha, if you want to talk, if you, um, to, for the, you know, to, if you uh, are able to talk to the people that are dropping those off. I'll okay, put that in my notes for next year. Yeah, because that's dangerous. They asked me if I wanted them close to the road, and I did say close to the road simply because <laughs> yeah, but not, they, they were right. I didn't. I didn't mean right on the road. <laughs> yeah, right in the road. <laughs> maybe, maybe they mis. Yeah. Obviously, they misunderstood me. I apologize. Okay. Everybody on Zoom is good. I have a little concern. I actually have a little concern about if it's right at the corner, if they moved it to the corner of Bethel Mountain Road and 100, the, the line much, of sight there would be a problem. Too much traffic on Bethel Mountain Road to have yeah. it close to that. And no, yeah. uh, no parking. A little history here on the porta bodies. Dangerous. When we originally put it down, we put it on the triangle park over there <laughs> yeah. by, by the, by ITI. And that didn't go over very big either. So the reason why it wound up on your side of the road over there was because we felt the phone company is a commercial building that's there's nobody ever in there, very seldom, and that is park property. So we stuck it there thinking that was going to be easier for the, the mower and, and the pumper and everything else to take care of it. We thought it was close enough and yet there was, it was on a side street that was a lot less traffic on it. So that's why that wound up there. Uh, we can review it later and, and uh, think on it and try to find a solution. I, I hate to put it over on by the skip mark because there just is too much congestion there with the intersections and, and all and I think that would be a nuisance to everyone. There's no real parking space there only on the Bethel Mountain Road side and it would lead to some confusion there. So I am not really fond of that site. But I think we just need to think about it a little more and leave it at that. What do you say, Pat? I'm dedicating 2022 to dog poop and porta potties. <laughs> That's nice. There we go. <laughs> Seems that's what we've been talking about all year. But yes, we will we will take it seriously and take a look at it and see if we can find a solution that fits everyone. As far as thank you and our budget. As far as the yeah. tennis courts goes. I mean, if, if we need to get rid of one, that sounds like the one that would be the one to go. It, it's just point. a suggestion um, that Julie and I had noticed just because we were so far over budget. Um, and it's just a lot of money with prices going up spending on quarter bodies that right. we just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that. I think another thing that we have to take into consideration is the fact that still a lot of places aren't opening up their restrooms. Yeah. That, and so the community needs way. to have some place for someone to relieve themselves. Definitely. And, I, and I these businesses are now experiencing increased water sewer rates. E yes. They aren't going to open them back up either. No, they aren't. So, you know, we have to look at a solution that we can live with. So Besides the rates and the mess they leave, it's not worth it. Right, exactly. Well, they have to clean them after somebody who uses a yeah, restroom. Yeah, there's a bunch of pigs in there. Yeah. They really are. The, the restaurants are more apt to to leave theirs so open, let they have to. customers use them because they have to, but the, the individual places like the Skip Mart and the store, the banks and, and the trade union, they don't have to supply that. So 
we'll continually think on this. Yes, we, we definitely appreciate the input, everyone. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go into our department reports. Um, Joan is not with us this evening, so we're going to move right into the library. I see Tony's here. Yeah, we have moved our trustees meeting to uh, the next, the next Tuesday, I believe. Not, not Still this on one. Still on Tuesdays, okay. Yeah. Is it just your next trustees meeting? Yes, yeah, I think so. Excuse me, I couldn't hear him when the date of that was. It's the 19th. And that is only for the next meeting. It's going to be changed one week later for just this July meeting. Okay, thank you. And I guess uh, we had an application in to use the park for the library outfit that was uh, going send someone from the brewing company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did, uh, did you do some research on what those laws are? We, well, we can wait for June to get back to make a, a conclusive decision on it. Um, but w what we have decided or discovered or felt so far is that we, we do not want to encourage alcohol being served on the park. Um, it would include, it would just open up avenues to the other buildings, the other areas, and the ball fields, and, and, and we, we don't allow alcohol anywhere in town property officially. So um, we do have to stick to what our decision was at the last meeting. Okay, well, I didn't feel that that was a decision of the last, it was sort of like, well, let's wait and see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is something that should be, uh, should be obvious to people if they, when they want to know about this kind of thing. Uh, it's not just, uh, let's just do it now and then. We don't really feel that we can um, approve it on, let's say, a liability basis. Um, I understand that you were having a licensed bartender there, but we would be the facility, the facilitator for the event, and um, it still doesn't, doesn't sit right with us to allow it. Okay, my point is that this should be in writing in some way so that people can understand this. I, I'm not sure how important this was. I don't know that it I was. I think the trigger is being pulled that it will be in writing. Very good. Because we also had, you know, another case with the library again some time ago that we were asked to go running around to get the uh, signatures and so on, and we didn't feel that that was correct was proper at all as uh, as a real part of this town and uh, you know if that's good we looked at the paperwork then and there was really nothing there that made sense in the town. so you know it's just kind of nice to know and be able to know ahead of time well we certainly didn't have any problem approving any of the other events. right I think you're right I'm not denying that it wasn't <clears throat> an issue with the fire department at one time, is that correct, Terry? What's that? With the help, when we used to have beer in the firehouse there, we had the insurance to, company shut that down. Yeah, and that's kind and of. And so we just don't allow I, it. I would think so with alcohol <clears throat> and this town supported fund, the insurance company would probably mm -hmm. look down on us for even thinking about it. So I would think that that's the real reason. and. And I'll look into that down the road because I do want to address use of the park and, and clean up the ordinance and make some different rules there on how uses should be used for use there. All right, thank so you. So that is up on the agenda at some point. I'll probably get to it this winter.
we do not have anyone from the highway department with us, but we do have Terry Savory from the utilities department. Anything new to report to us? We had a survey today from the state for the water system. A survey? Sanitary survey. Everything was good. And that is septic? Three, no, water. Water. Every three years we have to get it done before they give you a call. <coughs> well, that's good. That's good news. Yeah, the only problem we got is one hydrant that we argue about a lot, so mm -hmm. I got to write a letter. Our reservoir is in good shape? <laughs> yeah, we had that inspection last year. Okay. Hey, folks, water is looking good in our town. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yep. And I believe on our OWL camera we have our energy coordinator, Jeff Gephardt. I'm not much to report. Uh, just back to take off on vacation and uh, stop in at the uh, town garage and measure the uh, wall between the. Just back from take off on vacation and uh, oh, to good for you. Stopped in at the uh, town garage and measured the uh, wall between the unconditioned and conditioned space so that I can figure out an assembly that uh, will hold a little heat in that building. So I'll get that worked up and have it for you, hopefully for your next meeting. Okay, and that will have pricing with it as well. Is that what you're saying? Well, it'll be price, pricing on materials. Um, okay. Um, excuse me, Jeff, what was this for at the town garage? We're measuring space at the town garage, but I can't remember what it was for originally. Uh, the wall between the condition space, um, the workspace and where the trucks are parked, um, and the unconditioned space um, towards the ball fields, the three bays there, um, has once had insulation on it. It has few scraps left, um, but it's almost all uninsulated and I'm sure on the air seal. So it's a, uh, a very big heat loss. It won't take care of all the heat loss that's happening in the building, but it's a start to pick away some of the things we can do. Okay, so basically it's a space in the town garage that needs new insulation to stop heat loss. Yep. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Got it, Martha. That's it for, and that's it for me. Thanks that was asking us to uh, make it known, I, I should say, make it known that the Secretary of State Office on July 1st this has uh, redistricted the Senate seats. Um, and Robert wanted to call attention to the town's voters that um, we have changed districts with that, we are now part of Addison County. And um, Robert felt that there just was not a lot of input or publicity from uh, voters and uh, wanted to make it a point that if there were to be more discussion, which this is kind of a done deal, so I don't think that we can do or say a whole lot about it, but to raise awareness for in 10 years when this comes around again, perhaps. Um, but uh, he had some concerns that this, this happened without input from towns. Which is right. <laughs> we didn't have any input. In. <laughs> we did for the House. We yes, did, we did. But we did not for the Senate. So oh. um, that is his discussion. And he is not here. Um, we also do not have Zach, Kavakis, and Jake. No. So I guess we will table that since we're not quite sure what their discussion was for our next meeting. Is there anything else that we want to discuss tonight? Well, I move that we adjourn the meeting. I second that motion. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you. We are going to pay some bills and... Three.